What's up, everybody? My name is Parasite. Welcome back to the Jose Mourinho Challenge with Sporting. Today, we're taking on Benfica in the Allianz Cup semifinal. I was going to come back for the Atletico Madrid match in the Champions League, but I'm just going to be honest. I played a few games. I think I played three games since the last episode. Played it after I finished recording last one, and I just could not play anymore. We played three games, and nothing has changed. We're as equally awful as we've been for the past month. And it actually gotten even worse. The worst match of this whole run was the last one we played against Chavez. We drew nil-nil. We it was one of the most one-sided matches of the season. And we didn't score because we just can't. And I've actually correlated like the stats from the run we've been on. It's been so bad. I had to see you know, by the numbers you know, just how bad it's been. And it is disgusting. So the last three matches we played was Green Marais. We actually won. After that Chavez match, which we won, we beat Green Marais 1-0. Should have scored more. Reno Tiago gets the goal. 22 shots. 8 shots on target. 2.26 XG. 1 goal. They probably should have scored, but we definitely still should have won. Fortunately, we did, but still, not great. Then Rio Ave. 2-2. Two -two. We destroyed them. We absolutely destroyed them. 25 shots to 5. 9 shots on target to 4. They score half their shots on target. We scored 2 of 9. 2 of 25 shots total. They scored 2 of 5. And then, like I said, it was even worse. Chavez, one of the most one-sided matches of the season. Nil-nil. We had 28 shots, 13 on target. They had one shot, zero on target. They got a point. 62% possession, three half chances, 13 shots on target. They saved them all. So yeah, I've got the numbers. So it's starting at this Boa Vista match. This little run here, six games we've been on. In those six games, We've had a total of 153 shots. 153 shots over six games. And we've gotten five goals from them. Five. And what's even worse, four of these have been set pieces. Or indirectly from set pieces. Only one of the five has been from open play. And that goal wasn't even good. Because it was, I think it was Sorloth in this Rio Ave game. The first goal of uh, the Rio Ave game. Uh, Sorloth unmarked in the middle of the box. Free header. And he still doesn't even put it on target. It hits the post. Bounces off. Goes right back into his path. Uh, goalkeeper completely out of position. No defender within five yards of him. And he taps it into an empty net. That is the only goal we have scored from open play. From what? Like 148 shots. So that's a conversion rate of shots to goals of 3.2%. Put that into perspective. On the season as a whole, for us, our conversion rate for the season is somewhere in here. Cross completion. Oh, I'm right on it. Conversion rate, 10%. So we're averaging 10 on the season. But in the last six games, it's 3.2. That is worse then the worst team in the league, Alverca, who are absolutely dreadful, by the way. And they still have a 4% conversion rate on the season. They've only scored 7 goals. And yet they still have a better conversion rate than us. They have only had 2 more shots in the entire season than we've had in the last 6 games. And yet they've scored 7 goals. Just awful. And I've got the stats for the opposition as well. So we've had 153 shots. The opposition in that same six-game stretch had 44. And they scored two less goals. 100 was 109 less shots and only two less goals. Their conversion rate, still not good, but still over double ours, 6.8%. Which, I mean, still would be towards the bottom, but it's a hell of a lot better than 3.2. and. You know, those numbers might be ridiculous. When I talk about shots on target, it's even worse. Of our 153 shots in that this game stretch, uh, was it? I got uh, 66. That's a number. 66 have been on target. Which, for a, uh, I think it's, they have it in the game as well, the shots on target percentage or something like that. Yeah, shots on target ratio. So for the season, it's 44%. Over this last six games, 66 shots over 153 on target, or 153 total, it's 43%. So only 1% less than average. So it's not like we're getting less of our shots on target. It's that our shots on target 
aren't goals for the majority of the time. 66 shots on target. Only five of them have been goals. Which means in the last six games, goalkeepers have made six, or wait, yeah, 61 saves against us. 61 saves in the last six games. It's actually something that's not counted by the game, I don't think, but shots on target to goal ratio is 7.5%. That would be, if we go back to the conversion rate, they would be 15th in the league if it was just shots in total. Like 7% of Maritimo's total shots have been goals. 7.5% of our shots on target over the last six games have been goals. And I've got the opposition as well. So the opposition, in those 44 shots, have put 18 on target. We've had 18 shots on our goal in six matches. Only three have been goals, which is the shots on target ratio, or 18 shots to 44 shots total is a shots on target ratio of uh, 41%, so even lower than ours. But their shots on target to goal ratio, 18 to 3, is 16%. Ours is 7.5. There's a 16. And we have the best players in the league by a margin. By a wide margin. Uh, if we go to uh, salary per annum. So, teams we have played, we'll start with Rio Ave, who we drew 2-2 two -two with. Uh, they have a $4 million salary per annum. Uh, uh, what's the other team that we drew with? Chavez, they have a $5 million salary per annum. Uh, who's the other team in that stretch? Rimaraes, Vika, obviously, and Boa Vista. So Boa Vista have a 6.75. And Rimaraes, 23. So they're significantly higher than the rest of them. But it's mostly these. Chavez at 5, Rio Ave at 4.09. That is their salary for an entire year. Benjamin Sesco. I moved to salary for, uh, to yearly. He's averaging, or he has a yearly salary of 6.24 million. So Benjamin Sesco, on his own, is earning more than both of those teams combined. All of the players, first team, under-19s, under-23s, everything combined earns less than Benjamin Sesco. And yet, he's been awful. His average ratings are good, but he hasn't scored in over a month. And it's not like he hasn't had shots. The last game, against Chavez, nil-nil. He had nine shots, seven on target, zero goals. Game he played for that. Toro Grimaraes, 10 shots, 4 on target, 0 goals. Chavez, 9 shots, 4 on target, 0 goals. Benfica, 7 shots, 5 on target, 0 goals. Vizela, 7 shots, 4 on target, 0 goals. Puerto Minutes, 5 shots, 2 on target, 0 goals. So he's had, what, 11, 15, 20, 26 shots on target, and scored 0 goals from them. And I even went to him and said, you're, you know, you're not doing good enough in front of goal. He's like, I don't know why you're saying that. How dare you say that to me? You've had 26 shots on target and not scored a single goal from any of them. Like, how are you saying that I'm wrong in this instance? You've not scored in over a month, even though you've had 26 shots on target. He's had more shots on target in the month than the teams against us, against us have had in the last six games. And he scored three less goals than them. And he's being paid more than the teams that beat him combined. So I just, I don't, I don't understand. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Because it'd be one thing if it happened for a couple games every now and then. But it's a month or two every single season. And it doesn't matter who we have, what tactic we play. It just is guaranteed to happen. Every season. Even Bruno Thiago, who's on a ridiculous pace this season. Started the first couple of games with hat tricks. 21 games, 27 goals. He's even been awful. He scored a few goals, but he's not he's actually not even shooting. Like, look at his return compared to Sesco's. He's had five shots in target since mid-December. Like the same match that Sesco played. And then the same stretch where Sesco had 22 shots in target. Thiago had a five, and he scored two. Sesco, Sesco scored zero. And literally, no one's, do, no one's stepping up. No one's doing anything. DK, been awful. Sorloff, for the most part, been awful. 
Tiago, not been very good. Tomas, not been good. Quintana, been injured, but I don't think he's going to be any better. I'm, I don't know. I just don't know what to do. I just could, after I played this match, it's like, I had to walk away. I just had to close the game and walk away. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it anymore. I couldn't deal with absolutely destroying teams for a month straight and just barely squeaking out a couple wins and getting a bunch of draws and a bunch of losses that are completely undeserved. And it's not like it's just happened in this stretch. Like, we had this one good 5 nil, but it's been happening since this Green Marais match. Like, ever since, like, this is where it started in Green Marais. We had a couple results that made it look not so bad, but that's the second division side, and that's a really bad Vizela team. But almost every single other game, we were the much better team, and we've drawn four of them, lost one. Which doesn't seem crazy, but, I mean, when... You're the best team in the league. That's won it five of the last six years or four of the last five, whatever it is. And you've got Benfica, who just never drop points. It's extremely significant. The league is basically over. I don't think we have a chance of winning the league from here. Benfica have 57 points. They are nine points ahead of us. And they have already played both us and Porto twice. So the odds of them dropping nine points over the rest of the season is extremely low. If they don't have to play either of us or Porto. Like, the rest of their schedule is cupcake. So, there's a very low chance they drop as many points as they need for us to come back. And that is, is required on us winning every single game. Which, about a 0% chance of that happening. Our season has been going awful. Like, it's, we are already, like, on as bad of a stretch. Like, we've had one less draw than we had all of last season. And we have one more loss than we had all of last season. And we're in January. And our team and our performances, for the most part, have only gotten better. Like, this stretch to start the season, we were fantastic. We were very good. I mean, other than that Benfica loss, but that was because we were down a man for the entire match. But other than that, we have been fantastic for this whole stretch. Just destroying teams, barely conceding. Scoring at least three goals in the majority of these matches. And then we just completely forget how to play the game. I can't explain it. I don't know what to do. I can't explain it. But it just keeps happening. And it's so frustrating. Because as a manager, I don't know if there's literally anything I can do. I've set up chance conversion training for almost every single day this, this, season, or this month. Every single slot I could put it in, I put it in, and nothing has changed. I've got a tactic that's creating 153 shots over six games, and nothing's changing. I don't know what to do. I'm at a complete loss. We've got a couple days left in the, in the transfer window, and I'm almost at the point where I'm just going to sell everyone. Do a complete fire sale. Pedro Gonzalez, gone. Sesco. Gone. Tomas, gone. Tiago's gonna stay. DK, gone. Storloth, gone. I, what is the point of keeping them? If they have 153 shots and can't score a free, single freaking goal. Like, something has to change. I can't just keep doing this and hope it turns around because the way it's going right now, it looks like it's getting even worse. So I have, feel like I have to do something. And, you know, all these players are wanted. That's kind of the ridiculous thing. You know, big teams. Wants Sesco for like $100 million, and yet he can't score to save his life. So it's not like I don't have quality. The quality just stops playing well for a month of the season, every single season. And I can't explain it. So this is the team that's going to take on Benfica. I had to make some last-minute changes because I had forgotten you had to have two 121 Portuguese players in the Allianz Cup in the starting lineup. So Bruno Thiago comes back in, and Joao Carrao. Comes in to be a, a defensive midfielder for us. Got some decent tackling. Play a lot of different roles for us. So just a good versatile piece. 20 years old, Portuguese. Came through our youth academy. So he's going to get the game today. But the other team, rest of the squad is Quintana up top. Yeah. trying. I've tried everyone else. So it's time for Quintana to see if he can score a goal. Sesco's going to keep his spot. I don't know why. Uh, Gonzalez and Nunez are going to stay in the midfield. I don't think the rest of our team's been an issue. I mean, maybe a little bit Gonzalez. He can't score either. But we're creating chances like we have the rest of the entire time here. Just not finishing them. Uh, back line is going to be Santos, Inacio, Ruan, and Gusto with Horazo in net. So, uh, yeah. 
I mean, I don't know what to expect. I'm kind of expecting more of the same. I really don't want to hit the submit team button because I know it's just going to continue to happen. and I'm just going to get angrier and angrier. But maybe it's just going to magically turn itself around out of nowhere because, who knows, football manager is stupid sometimes. I don't want to do it. I don't want to play anymore. I got to, though. I got to play this game. We have to start turning things around. If we don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with this team. I don't know what to do with this save. I just, if this wasn't a YouTube save, I might have just quit here. Like this, That might have been enough for me. Like, okay, done playing with these players. Done playing with this team. It is not good for my mental health. But I've got to keep on and just pray to the FM gods that we could just figure something out. I expect victory here. We cannot afford to lose to our rivals. No matter how good they are. The last time we played them, we were the better team. But we still walked away with absolutely nothing. Because they scored their chances and we didn't. In this sport, what matters is scoring goals and not conceding goals. If you want to do it at a high level, you're going to have to do both. You can't get away with one or the other. Where are you looking for improvements after a disappointing match against Chavez last time out? We just have to start scoring goals. We've had plenty of chances recently, and we've not been putting them away. That has to change. Do you think the first goal here will be crucial? I just want to score. It doesn't really matter what minute it is. We just need to start scoring. First highlight is going to be a minute and a half in, and it's going to start with Benfica. Looks like they got a pretty strong squad out there, so they're definitely taking this seriously. Walgate's going to find a ball to the back post. Gusto's going to head it away. But it's going to fall to Nuno Tavares. So let's see if he can put a, another ball in. Decent job by... Couldn't stop the ball in, but I was going to say, decent job by whoever this is. I wish I could click him. Sesco, actually, getting out wide defending. They find a ball through to Origi. Wow, that is a interesting animation. He slid through him to block the, to block the shot. I'll take it, though. They have a corner, though. If we're going to put it in Horta back post, headed away by Bruno Thiago. It's going to fall to Origi. They got a shot from the edge of the box. What a save that was. Probably could have put it more in the corner, but Harazzo still had a lot to do there. And he did well to send it out for another corner. I'm going to put it in, though. Got to get this one away and clear. And a little bit better this time. But they're going to have another corner. John Mario to put it in. Near post. Cabral. Yeah, two shots in target. One really good save, and then the other one goes in. Well, that's probably game over. I would be surprised if we score a goal. Now that in, this might be our first highlight. We're still without a shot. Ignacio is going to find Mateus Nunez. Jao Cuarao is going to go back to Mateus Nunez. Look for what a hopeful ball over the top. It's never getting there. We're going to get the ball back. Quintana is going to be on it. Pretty poor clearance by Benfica. Look for another ball on Tiago. Lays off to Sesco. Pedro Gonzalez. Wow. I fully expected that to go into row Z. Like 90% of his shots in those scenarios isn't hitting the target. But not only does he hit the target, he puts it in the back of the net. I didn't think we'd get a goal, but we have from our first shot. That is new territory. 21 minutes in. We've got a second shot. We didn't score it. I thought we might just go three shots, three goals. Just to spite me. But we're going to have a chance. Nuno Santos heads this down for Quintana. I pick it up and go back to Nuno Santos. We've got plenty of left back options available, but I want to give him some game time. So he's in. Joe Corral with an absolutely dreadful pass. I didn't want to have to include him, but... Had to have an under-21 minutes player, and he's the best one. Eventually, the Carrazzo makes a comfortable save, though, and we're looking to build up from the back again. Ruan's on it. Goes for a long ball. Pruno Tiago, not the ideal person to aim for when you've got Sesco, and I guess Quintana's not big, but when you've got Sesco out there, probably want to aim for him. They are through now, though. Baumgartner. Two goals, three shots in target. No, nope. it just It's not going to stop happening. Every team we play is just the most clinical team to ever play this sport. We've actually been the most clinical we've ever been. But it's not going to matter if we can't make any saves. And we're going to want to have time down to one There's going to be one last highlight. If we can get a goal here, that would be very nice. I would like to... I mean, going to halftime 2-2 is a lot better than going into halftime at 2-1. Pedro Gonzalez, that is probably a free kick, I think. I don't know. It's very, very close. We'll see. This could, this could literally go in. I've seen this sort, same sort of animation go both ways. So I'd like it to be a penalty. 
And it's going to be a penalty. Bruno Tiago, good penalty taker, which means very high chance he misses this. He's going to take it. Please score it. We're going to go to halftime 2-2. I mean, that's something. That's something, I guess. We've not been good. Like, we, recently, we've been creating bunches of chances. We're not even doing that today. And it's hard to say we've been super clinical. I mean, four shots in target, two goals, but one was a penalty. So hard to give him a lot of praise there. At least we're not losing. That's all I can say. I don't like what I just saw from this team. Frankly, we're pretty lucky to be even at this point. We probably should be losing. We have not been good in any phase. Defensively, we've been extremely poor in that first half. And usually our problem has been not taking our chances. Today, we're not even creating them. You're going to have to be so much better in the second half. Otherwise, you will not win. First highlight for us is going to be a corner. Nuno Santos, back post. Sesco. Basically, we're just we're just corner merchants, I guess. Set piece merchants, whatever you want to call it. We did get at least one goal from open play. That was nice, but other two goals, set pieces. This has done nothing, absolutely nothing, to make me feel any better. Second highlight of the half is going to be a throw in for us down this left hand side. Nacio is going to find Mateus Nunez. He's going to run the defense. He's going to look to see if he can find or just give the ball away. That works too. Just just keep dribbling it until he takes it off your foot. Whatever you think. Now it looks like it's going to be a Benfica attack. Cabral is going to. Put out wide to Nuno Tavares. Look for Jeremy Boga, newly introduced to the pitch. He's got really good dribbling, and he kind of showed it off there. He's going to put a ball in. Origi, goal. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that, that's just how it is. I guess it's just how it is anymore. I guess it's just how it is. Navistic is... You might be saying, oh, he probably should have kept Navistic. Barraza has been god-awful. So is Navistic. I don't think there is any good solution. 63rd minute. Another highlight. This could be anything. Mateus Nunez, Sesco. I mean, it's just it's just sad at this point. It's just sad. We look like a completely different team. We look completely and utterly lost out there. Nacio's going to find Nuno Santos. Go down this left-hand side. He's going to find Quintana. Not had a good game. He's going to pull it back for Nacio. Got an on the ball. Might sub him off pretty soon. He's having a dreadful match. You don't have to have the under-21 players on for the entire match. Just for the start. Good lord. But even that's not going in for us. What the hell am I supposed to do? Six, seven minute. Throw in for Benfica. Awesome. Uh, we do intercept it, though. Dyer has come on for Joao Crow. Nunez has also been just absolutely dreadful, so he's probably coming off next. Quintana on the ball. See if he can get an assist. I mean, I'll take anything at this point. Just a shot on target. I would celebrate a shot on target like we just won the World Cup. Inacio. We're looking to still attack. And Nacio's running out of defense. Going to find Mateus Nunez. Poor touch, but he gets it back under control. Finds Bruno Tiago. And we score another open play goal. Yay! <laughs> uh, still, I mean, I don't even know anymore. Like, I just, I don't even know. Had 153 shots in the last six matches and scored five goals. We've had, what, 10 shots in this match and scored four. How many goals shots have we had? 13. And we scored four. Against a really good team. Somebody explain that. 82nd minute, Benfica are going to have a deep free kick. It means probably this is going to end up in a goal. Boga gets the ball. We're going to find another ball in. And it's a penalty? No, not a penalty. I was pretty certain it was going to be a penalty. They have another chance to score still. Ignacio is not going to get it clear. John Mario Dyer is eventually going to win the tackle. And we look to attack. See if we can hit him on the counter. For a ball over the top, Bruno Tiago is not going to quite get there. Cisco's not going to get to that ball either. So now it's going to be another Benfica attack, maybe? Alvetti? Look for a ball over the top for Origi. I mean, that's just dreadful. And of course it goes. Okay. I'm very close to putting a position player in net. That was directly at his feet, and he still couldn't get it. He looked like a freaking 85 year old geriatric. Oh, he's camp. It's going to take me like another five minutes to bend over, guys. Sorry. It's, if we do, you know, take our chances, our defense obviously has to also become absolutely god-awful, apparently. We can't be playing good in both phases at the same time. If we're scoring goals, our defense has to be absolutely atrocious. If our attack is absolutely atrocious, our defense is going to be solid. Why can't we not have, you know, both? Good offense and a good defense. That'd be nice to have at least once. Just absolutely dreadful match for Harazo and our defense as a whole.
92nd minute. If they score here, it's over. And they're going to look to score. They've got the ball. Origi is apparently just a god. He's going to find whoever that is. I don't know if he's a regen. If he's not a regen, he's definitely a player I've never heard of in my entire life. Ruan gets the ball cleared. And we're going to look to attack. Sesco's going to pick it up. Doesn't have many options, really, so far. He's going to look for basically nobody. Awesome pass. Great pass, Sesco. I thought we were going to intercept that ball out and then we're not have a chance. But nope, they're going to attack. Ruan, after an absolutely horrible mistake to allow the last goal, makes the tackle there. At least he made up for it a little bit. Because if he didn't make that tackle, he was through on goal. And with the way I've seen Harazo play this match, about 99% chance that's going to end up in the back of the net. And Thiago hits it directly at the goalkeeper. And he's offside anyways. And it goes straight to pins. From what I've seen from both goal goalkeepers so far this match, this penalty shootout might never end. Benfica to take the first penalty. It's going to be Divock Origi who gets there first. I would be shocked if Harazo makes a single save in this penalty shootout. Origi's comfortably in the corner. Harazo goes the wrong way. Sesco's going to take our first penalty. He's not our best penalty taker, but I want to save Tiago. Oh my God. Bruno Tiago for third, but apparently it's not going to matter because everyone else is just going to miss. Sesco has had an absolutely just horrific past couple of months. Gets Hernandez right in the corner. At least keep it with the way, right way this time. That's progress. Nuno Santos, our second penalty taker. Odds are he misses, probably pretty high. Explain it. Somebody explain it. Explain how we're just gone from best team in the league, able to get to a Champions League semifinal, to complete and utter incompetence. Just out of nowhere. Bruno Thiago, I put him at third just because I thought, okay, we, you know, it might be very important. Eventually, it's, I guess it's going to be more important than I thought it might even be because if he misses this, it's over. I mean, we're out. We're not going to win this. I would be shocked. I'd be flabbergasted if Horazo saves two shots. Thiago does finish it. Apparently, he's the only one that knows how to shoot. All right, for the winning penalty, who's going to take it? Probably their goalkeeper. Hey, how long are you going to take? Jeremy Boga came on as a sub, absolutely torched us down the left flank, and he's going to win this for Benfica because Harazo is god-awful. Pathetic. This team is absolutely pathetic. 2.21 XG to 0.97. I think in this now seven-game stretch, only one team has had an XG above one, and they didn't even score that game. But Benfica are round one, and they get four goals. Because Carrazzo might be the worst goalkeeper to ever be on this planet. I'm not even going to yell. Apparently, it does no good. But don't be mistaken. That doesn't mean that I'm content with that performance. In reality, I'm furious. The fact that it didn't even win to penalties is enough. But to lose? Do better. Considering the recent run of bad results, do you think these are the players to turn things around? To be frank, no. If they were, we would have seen some sort of improvement by now. It's every single match over the course of an entire month. Changes will be made. Bruno Tiago is outperforming his XG right now. Do you have an opinion about that? I mean, great for him. I'm happy for him. But no one else currently is. We need somebody else to step up and play at that level. Because right now, the rest of the team is letting him down. Future me here. I had this video all done, you know, the outro all recorded, basically just me having a mental breakdown. But you know, after I got done with it, you know, I finished recording, turned everything off. I just stepped away, stepped away from my computer, stepped away from the game, just everything. I need to just get away from it. And, you know, hoping to kind of be able to get a fresh perspective, come back with an open mind and see if I could really figure this thing out. And, I think I have. I think I have identified the issue. At least, I hope for all that is holy I've identified the issue. I haven't played any games, so I can't say for sure. But from what I've seen, it looks pretty obvious. So, something I've thought about is, you know, we'd, we'd had all these shots, all these shots on target. Our XG seemed normal. But there had to be something. There had to be something there. And so I was thinking, maybe it's just the quality of the shots. Even though, you know, I've been 
watching the long shots in the games as I'm going, it didn't seem like we had a lot of long shots. You know, maybe our shots were just from really bad angles and long shots that I just didn't realize how many we were having. Maybe that was the issue. That's kind of what I came in to look for. I went to look at each match during this stretch. I went to every single match, looked at the analytical data, and looked at the shots. Shots, scoring chances, and all that. See where they were coming from and see if I could identify the issue. And at first, I didn't think I had. Because if you look at our shots, this is the game against Chavez that we drew nil-nil, even though we absolutely thrashed them. We had 13 shots saved. They were all from these positions. Like, those are high, high, high-quality goal-scoring positions. Like, you have to score at least a couple of these from that angle. Just, just looking at it from, you know, just no bias or anything like that. Those should be going in. Some of those should be going in. And the problem, I, the thing I kind of noticed is that, you know, of these shots, only two of them were Colossus' half chances. So even though we've had 13 shots from very close in at a pretty decent angle, they're not getting high quality chances out of them. So I was like, I don't understand how it's the case. How could you have so many shots from such a close angle, such a close range, and just then be so low quality? Then I found the issue. You know, I looked through all this, I thought, okay, it's just, because even our shots on off target, like, most of them are in the box still. So, like, how are we doing this? How can we be this bad? How can our finishing be this poor? I didn't think, of, like, it's not, it shouldn't be possible. It's the type of shot. It's not where it's at. It's not that it's in the box. It's not that it's close range. It's not the angle. It's the type of shot we're having. And the type of shot we're having are headers. A lot of these are headers. Both of these from this angle, both headers. It's hard to see exactly how many because you know, there's a bunch of freaking shots in here. But I would like a few because you can, you know, determine which side of the, which part of the pitch you want to look at. Let's go to uh, headers one. Get rid of the shots. Get rid of the shots. And you can see, you can pick what part of the pitch and everything like that. I wish if you, like, picked, like, this half of the pitch, that it would just, like, get rid of this half and make this a little bit bigger so you can see a little bit higher detail, but that's just not a thing. But, yeah, if you look at the shot, the headers one and the shot saved, there's a lot of overlap there. An absolute lot. Now, there's some shots that aren't headers, but it looks like the majority are. The vast majority are headers. So we're just, we're crossing too much. That is the issue. We are crossing far too much. So we're still having plenty of chances. You know, with all the chances we get, our XGs looks normal. But each individual shot is just low quality because it's a header. So it makes it easy for the goalkeeper to save. And so the goalkeepers look like gods. And we look like you got a broken foot all the time. But the fact is, it's just headers. There's so many headers. And the other game I'm going to show you that kind of backs this up as well is this Benfica match. And it, I looked through all of them. It's, it's pretty much the case in all of them. But it's Benfica match. We absolutely destroyed them. They did nothing. They scored one chance. And we had 13 shots or how much on target and didn't score any of them. Uh, teams and make sure it's us. Shots and aerial challenges. So shots saved. Again. Two from outside the box. And that's like the most we've had this entire run in a single match is two. And then you overlap with headers one. And, I mean, a lot of those shots that were saved still, again, headers. Some of them not. This one by Sesco and this one by Sorloff were not headers. But, and this one here by Sorloff. But the majority are. The majority of headers, and then even the shots off target, again, the, the vast majority are headers. That's our issue. Our issue is we are crossing far too much, and it is backed up by the team stats on the league. We go to team detail, go to cross completed. We have completed over double second place. The bottom has 81. We have 470. We have completed 470 crosses, and we're just about in February. Like, that might seem like, oh, nothing wrong with that. You know, you're completing them. You know, it gives you a decent chance of scoring. It's just, it's just too many. It's just far too many. 
you can complete too many crosses, and that's exactly what we are doing. We are crossing far too much, and that is giving us low quality chances. And in these games we absolutely dominate, we can't create good chances because every single time we get in the position to shoot, it's a header. And those are just hard to score with at any consistency. And that's the problem we've been having. So, the solution. Pretty simple. Work the ball into the box. That, that hopefully, is going to solve the issue. The way I view this instruction is basically like, and the reason I didn't have it on it for the, for, for the most part, is because of who we have at striker. You know, we've got Sesco, we've got Sorloff, we've got DK, all very good in the air. And the way I view this instruction is, you know, if you don't have it on, you're not, you know, directly encouraging to have them to cross, but you're giving them the freedom to cross when they see an opportunity. And normally it wouldn't be an issue, I don't think, but this team seems to cross at every given opportunity. So it has become an issue. And so working the ball into the box is basically telling them to cross less. And even though that's not really exactly what I want with having, you know, six foot five Sesco in the box, but it's what I'm going to have to do because we are crossing far too much. And there's literally like no other way for me to tell them to cross less other than going to the individual instruction and telling them to cross less. But I think this kind of achieves the same thing. And so that's the change I've made. It's very small. It's very simple. But hopefully it could be a big game changer for us. I'm excited to see over these last three, next three matches, they're all league matches, whether this actually makes a difference. You know, I'll look through all the analytics for all of them, see if there's a big difference in the, the quality of the chances we're getting. What's confusing to me is the fact that, you know, before we had this stretch, you know, started with Green Moraish, wasn't really an issue. We, we were doing pretty well. One loss to Benfica when we were down a man the entire match away from home. Dragons Pacas were kind of saw the same kind of issue. Same for this Bellinensis match. A loss against Man City away, which is just going to happen. But almost every single other match, we're just destroying teams. Scoring plenty of goals. It didn't seem to be an issue at all. But now it is. And I don't know what's changed. But I've it's what I've identified being the issue. And so we've got to make the change now. We've got to make the change. So our three matches coming up are against Morantz, Paco de Ferreira, and Maritimo. All very winnable mid-table teams. And so we'll really be able to see if this is really going to make a difference. You know, we should be having good possession against all of them. We should still be having a fair amount of shots, but I don't want to say hopefully we have less shots. But we probably I, it's probably good if we have less shots, just to increase the quality of each shot. So I'm going to play these three games. I didn't originally plan on coming back to the next episode tomorrow because I was just going to take a few days off because it was literally harming my mental health. But that was a lot of reason. A lot of reason for that was because I just didn't have any ideas. I was completely spent. I felt like I was doing everything I could and it just I could not identify the issue. But now I think and hope to the FM gods that I have. So next episode, we will be back playing Atletico Madrid and Rio Ave. I'm really hoping to get the episode out tomorrow. No absolute guarantees, but I'm really going to try to get it out tomorrow. I think, I mean, if it continues to happen in these three games, I might just, I might just retire. I don't know. I might just retire and never play FM again. <laughs> because if this doesn't work, I am literally, officially, completely out of ideas. So yeah, when I originally recorded this, I ended on a very sad and poor note because I was hopeless and idealist and just didn't have any prospects of actually coming out of this funk. Now I kind of do. So hopefully we can be a little bit optimistic going forward. Hopefully we can turn this around. I'll see you next time. Wait, before we get to the outro, even more into the future me here. We played one game since I made the change. Against Morantz, 28 shots, 13 on target, 1-3-1. All three goals were headers. If you made it this far, why don't you like the video, subscribe, and click the bell. The links to all my socials and my Twitch are in the description. I really appreciate all your support. Thank you all for joining me.
and I'll see you next time.